three things we need to know. We need to know how to identify them, how to treat them, and how to protect our hives from small hive beetle. Yeah, that's what we want. Off they go. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the life cycle of the small hive beetle. Up here we've got one of these little ladies who's popped into the hive and deposited some eggs. So that's where we start. In two to four days, the eggs hatch and the larvae immediately start looking for food. Then they move down once they've grown, after about seven to 10 days, it's time for them to exit the hive. This is the thing I didn't know until I started learning about them, was that they exit the hive and they drop into the soil. And that is where they pupate in the soil. So they pupate in the top four inches of the soil on average, and this can take from three to six weeks to complete, depending on the temperature and the soil moisture. Once they've emerged, the beetles locate the host bee colonies by their odour. They're pretty strong flyers and they can disperse to other hives easily. They can actually fly up to a kilometre. So, and these little guys, um, they can actually, well, the larvae, once they drop into the soil, they can actually travel, um, I think it was 100 metres, 100 metres, I think, to look for suitable soil. So if it's just rocks underneath your hive, they'll just keep wandering around until they find a nice medium for them to set up house and, uh, well, to pupate. So identification of eggs. The eggs are pearly white. They're quite small, they're only about two thirds the size of a honeybee egg. They're laid in irregular clusters, as you can see. They're found in cracks and crevices and near the food source. So these ones have been laid in the actual uh, comb, they will they will actually get bury you know like dig into the comb as well to lay the eggs in there. Now, can anyone see the eggs in this one? They can clearly be seen adhering to the sides of the brood cells, empty and occupied. You can actually see here. There's a there's a little bubble. And there's another one in there. And they will break open cells with pupae in them. They make a bit of a mess. So identification of larvae. The larvae are creamy white. Their size is a centimetre by 1.6 millimetres. They've got six little le tiny legs at the front of the body, two rows of small spines down the back. They chew through combs, they have yeast in their poo that causes the honey to ferment and slime and makes a hell of a mess. But it's the most damaging phase of the beetle. The larva exit the hive to pupate in the soil, as we said. So there's one up close and personal. You can see the six legs at the front. They look very, very similar to a wax moth grub. In the size too. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit hard to tell the difference. So you think pretty much the only way you can tell the difference is the damage that they leave behind. These leave a wet, gooey mess, whereas um, hive moth, uh, wax moth, will leave a dry webbing. So that's the difference. The pupae, how cute are they? Don't, are they look like little seals or something, don't they? Those have actually been exhumed from their underground chambers. They. So they start creamy white, they change to brown to black before emerging. They burrow into moist soil four inches and they can utilise a range of moist mediums. And as I said, they can crawl up to 100 metres to find the best place. So drenching, some people tend, would, you know, think, well, we'll just drench around the, the hive. Well, it's not necessarily going to be successful because that's not necessarily where they're going to be. You do really need to dig up and have a look. And I'm not all that partial to drenching the soil around the hive anyway. So drenching means with water or with a chemical? With a chemical. Okay. Yeah, I've heard people using chemicals. What about lime? Um, I've, I've reached somewhere where people put lime under the hive. Mm. No, I didn't read that one. Does anyone else know about lime? No. Okay, identification of the adult. They're dark brown to black oval shaped beetles. They can vary in size considerably. 
from four millimetres to seven millimetres. And that depends on the diet during the larval stage. So if they've got plenty to eat, they're going to be bigger. Um, you can see here the rounded, clubbed antenna, and that's really quite indicative of the beetle. Uh, their wing case finishes around about there. And so the abdomen protrudes from that. And the pronata, the pronotion is the thorax covering here, is shield shaped. There's actually a lot of beetles that are that shape. So probably this is the best <coughs> indicator of what they are. And also the fact that they're running around on top of your frames. So adults are good flyers. Below 10 degrees Celsius, they become inactive. They tend to lay eggs when they're disturbed as, uh, I guess, a kind of a panic mechanism. They can live on and reproduce on fruit, but they prefer hive products. They lay eggs when it's 20 to 40 degrees centigrade. They lay more in conditions of high humidity. They're sexually active three to six days after emergence, and they can live for six months. They avoid the light and they fly just before dusk. So there's another one giving an indication of the size. What do you do when you see one in your hive? Don't panic, because it's not unusual to see one or two adults in your hive. If your hive has a strong, healthy colony with good productive queen, your bees will get rid of a few small hive beetle. You can actually see them if you hop onto um, YouTube, you can see uh, little movies of them, the bees actually chasing the beetles down the side of the box and they'll chase them right down to the bottom. And if you've got um, a solid bottom, you're in a bit more strife than if you don't. You're better off having either uh, a wire bottom or a ventilated bottom of some kind on your hive because then once the beetles are chased through the bottom, they, don't, they tend not to come back up again once the uh, bees have chased them out. If you see eggs, yes, you've got good eyes, or larvae, then you know your problem is more serious and your treatment plan will have to swing into action. If there are adults and larvae and sliming, it's definitely time to panic. Identifying, finding small hive beetle in a hive. They can be hard to find because they're very small and hide as soon as light enters the hive. So one of the things, one of the ways you can do it is uh, basically what you do when you do a hive inspection. So you take your lid, pop it upside down on the ground, and you put your super on top of that, square on it, and that leaves the top of the hive exposed to the light. It leaves the top of the brood box exposed to the light, and any beetles that are in there will run down into the lid or into the bottom. So you wait for a few minutes, and then you lift the entire box up, and have a look and see if you can see any beetles down the bottom or in the box, box bottom, or in the lid. Another way, if you suspect you've got them, if you've got, if you've seen a couple and you're just not sure how many you've got, another way of doing it is to put a piece of core flute or corrugated cardboard, which is sealed at one end, so they get stuck in there. You put that on the bottom of your hive at the back, so the darker the better. The holes need to be small enough to prevent the bees getting inside, but obviously big enough for the beetles to get in. Wire can be inserted to, can be attached to insert and remove it. So you leave it there for a few days, then you can pull it out and check for the beetles. Feeding small hive beetle larvae cause the most damage in the hive by eating bee eggs, bee brood, pollen and honey. Pretty much everything. All the things you don't want them to eat. They burrow through combs and cappings. They contaminate the honey with the yeast contained in the faeces, causing it to ferment, slime, froth, and weep out of the cells. And I must say, when I was looking for a photo of this, I was gagging. It was revolting. It's something you seriously you do not want to see. Um, large numbers can also cause the queen to stop laying and abscond. Oh, why wouldn't she? Stored honey supers, hive equipment, slum gum. Does everyone know what slum gum is? Does anyone know what slum gum is? Yes. Yes. Explain to me slum gum, Rob. Slum gum is a residue. It's a residue left after you melt the wax down, and the slum gum is 
the deeds, it's the, it's the, the dirt accumulated in the hive, it's, it's just all of that together in one year. That's right. And it's all the pupa cases as well that might get left behind. And it, it's just this black gooey mess, but it's ambrosia to the bees, I mean to the small hive beetle. It's just the most wonderful tucker to them. It's, you know, like caviar. Um, so it don't, you don't leave that line around. Broken frames, because obviously they've got nooks and crannies that the um, small hive beetle can get into. Unclean extracting sheds. All of these things are all very susceptible to small hive beetle larval damage because there are no bees are present to protect them from adult beetles laying the eggs. Spoilage of honey, damaged combs and increased small hive beetle populations can result. So there's one of those lovely photos that that was honey. That was beautiful capped honey and it's now just turned it into this slimy, frothing, horrible muck which is no good to, to bees or people. It's horrible stuff. So you need to identify your problem. The damage begins when the hives are weak or stressed. So find the cause. In, can anyone think of any suggestions why your hive might be weak or stressed? What about... Failing queen. Pardon? Failing queen. Yes, failing queen, definitely. Lack of honey stores. Yep, starvation. Some other disease. Some other disease, I'm not going to list, but yes. Yeah. That's true. So rest and swarming, these are the ones I've got down. No queen. Poisoning, something you don't think about a lot, but it's certainly a possibility. Over super, you might be one, giving the bees too much. Giving the bees too much room. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, and overheating is another one. Mm. They're hungry or if they're thirsty, sometimes we just don't think about it. The, bee, the bees might be thirsty. You need to go and have a look at your water source and just, just double check that everything's okay. Other pests, pests for example, wasps or as Peter said, other bugs that might be in the hive. And the hive moisture. Small hive beetle love humidity. So if it's been hot and it's been humid or it's rained and there's water in it and condensation inside your hive, the, it's just perfect for small hive beetles. They just love it. And it will also cause um, your bees not to be happy. We know they don't like moisture in their hives. Now, I found this slide when I was looking, doing my presentation and it had quotation marks and I thought, oh, I like that. I think I'm going to put a quotation in there. So I'll put a quotation in there. It says, it is known that temperatures below freezing will kill all stages of small hive beetle. And the only person I could think of who was a beetle expert was him. <laughs> but I don't think he said it. <laughs> okay, so treatment. Equipment recovery. As Sir Paul has already told us, freezing will kill all stages of small hive beetle. So once that is done, once you've got the bits out of the hive that are contaminated and you have frozen them, individual frames with small localised damage caused by the larvae can be placed into a strong colony to be cleaned. I don't know about anybody else. I don't know that I'd do that, but it was in the book. <laughs> so. It's, it's okay, apparently, to do that. For more severe infestations and colony damage, infected equipment should be thoroughly soaked and washed to get rid of the spoiled honey. Again, I guess it's a matter of money, I guess. If, if you don't want to uh, start from scratch, then this is an option. You can wash it all. You can wash it, you can rinse it after it's been freezed because it is, they're all dead. But um, I think I wouldn't do that. I think that Pardon? Fire is another option. Fire, fire is another option. <laughs> Indeed. <That's right. laughs> I tend to think I'd scrap the whole lot and re, um, you know, put a completely new foundation on it and clean it all and start from scratch. I don't know that I'd give it back to the bees to clean them. Uh, washing detergent or bleach in water will kill larvae faster than freezing. This, I suppose, is for people who either don't have a freezer or um, don't want to use the freezer. 
or want to get rid of them really quickly. They're in a hurry to get it all sorted out. So that is a possibility. But the thought of them putting that back into the hive, for me, is just abhorrent. I don't know that I could put something back in the hive that I'd bleached. But, you know, it's in the book. Rinse it all thoroughly and return it back into a strong colony to clean up. Well, what a rotten job. I don't know. Uh, it says here it may take some time for the bees to accept it. Well, yeah, it take me a long time. Okay, protection. Maintain strong, healthy hives with a productive queen and a high bee to comb ratio. In other words, don't leave empty boxes on your hive if you can help it. And it's a fine line, I know. You're wanting to put boxes on to stop swarming, but at the same time, you're not wanting to create so much space for the hive beetle to be able to just go crazy. So you just the, the, the secret is to keep an eye on it, to, to inspect and just keep an eye on it and see how things are going. Uh, if you're getting a bit of small hive beetle in there, then just reduce the amount of um, empty wax you've got there. Good hygiene around the apiary. Don't leave dead colonies, combs, burr comb, beeswax scraps, etc. lying around. It's all food for the small hive beetle. Keep the bottom boards free of debris or change to ventilated bottom boards. Uh, and use and keep track of traps being used as well. Um, normal wooden bottom boards, we've actually went and had a look at um, a lady's hive. She had, she didn't know what was going on. She hadn't been a hive for a while and uh, she and her husband and she, they said, well, we don't know what's going on in there. There was small hive beetle in there. And right down the bottom where they hadn't actually cleaned, they didn't realise that they had to clean the bottom board. And as we scraped the bottom board with a paint scraper and we were lifting up um, sort of flakes of grot off the bottom, uh, there were grubs underneath. Underneath this grot on the bottom board. So you do need to be diligent about keeping them clean. Unite weak colonies together or combine them to strong colonies. Boost weak colonies with a frame of capped brood from strong, clean, undiseased colonies. So that's another way. Minimise hive manipulations, especially during hot, humid weather. Again, okay, this is awkward. You know, you're wanting to keep an eye on things to make sure that the small hive beetle isn't getting out of control. And yet hive manipulations is one of the things that will stimulate them to, to lay eggs. So a lot of this information is actually for um, <laughs> northern New South Wales and Queensland, where it is a lot more humid than it is here. But humid conditions are becoming more prevalent here. That's the other thing, so it's something Ron, we, have, uh, we have to think about. You mentioned cover <coughs> there. Um, I noticed, I think what we passed around there was a, a furry yeah. um, cover mat. Uh, is, that's used to catch small light beetle as well, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. That was, uh, when, I, um, when I did the course with Howard, he was quite, um, quite a fan of that, that the, the, um, the cover mats should be the type that have the furry stuff underneath the vinyl so that it will catch the small half beetle. So it's vinyl with the fuzzy yeah. um, underneath. Uh, under, on top. Uh, the fuzzy on the top. Yeah, I know the fuzzy on top, but it, it, if you were installing it in your house, the fuzzy would be below. Mm -hmm. I always, we always put the fuzzy on the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm fuzzy down. <coughs> fuzzy you put fuzzy down? down? Yeah, fuzzy yeah down. we put fuzzy down because it's darker. Oh, is it? No. I don't know. If you've got the putting the hive mats in, you put a layer of um, chuck type material underneath the hive mat. Yeah. That does the same thing, trapping the. So that would wouldn't encourage. I'm worried about that. Maybe encouraging the small hive beetle, giving them extra places to hide. No, no, the, the, the chucks, they get caught. They caught it, so they can't do anything anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maximum uh, minimising cracks and crevices in your hive, just maintenance. Use good quality equipment. Remove burr comb and items that prevent the access to areas such as the. Avoid leaving clearer boards. I didn't think of this one, but avoid leaving clearer boards on hives beyond two days. As the bee to comb ratio decreases, so does the ability of the bees to chase off the small hive beetle. 
Borgies and hive components contaminated with the new stage. Clear aboard is what uh, you pop in a clear aboard to um, to clear an area or a box so that you can remove the frames for extraction. It's just the easiest way of clearing all the bees out so that you don't have to worry about brushing them off. It's a one way. Uh, void using hive components contaminated with any stage of small hive beetle. Well, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? Okay, protect, clean up the honey shed. Keep it clean and tidy. Two, remove dead bees. One of the things I read too was to make sure that you remove your dead out hives. Um, that some people will just, you know, realise well, God, that that hive's gone, and they'll just leave it there. And that's, that's like, it's like a, you know, everything paid cruise for a small hive beetle. It's, you know, wow, all that food in there. So you either plug it up so nothing can get in there, uh, and even that's a bit dicey, but the best thing to do is to take it away as soon as you possibly can so it's not there for anything else to breathe. Don't leave broken frames, slum gum or dead hives in the shed. Clean the extractor after use. One of the other things that was in my book that I didn't put up here was to skim the top of the settling tank. Now, can anyone tell me why you would need to do that? Do what? Clean skim. the top, skim the top off the settling tank. That's where the eggs are. That's where the eggs are. Okay. But most settling tanks, don't they have lids? Our house settling tank has a lid that has they clips. They can still get in. Okay, that's good to know. So, that, there you are. You should skim the top off your settling tank. Clean the extractor after use as soon as possible. Remove only as much honey as can be extracted in one to two days. Again, there might be eggs on it. Uh, but also you don't want a uh, small hive beetle to get access to the honey. So uh, what we do if we're keeping our frames for any longer than that is we'll put them in an airtight ex esky so that nothing can get in. But the problem with that is if you don't look at it for a while and you might have a bit of moth in it or, or beetle eggs, then you're a bit sunk. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Sorry? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Store honey supers and sticky thoughtfully. Okay. Just be aware that um, there could be nasties on them and yeah, freeze them first, put them in bags or put them in boxes that you can seal. Before storing extracted supers or dead out hives, freeze or fumigate them. And I'm not talking about fumigation tonight. I'm not talking about chemicals. This is just the uh, easier approach. Beetle traps and bottom boards. So this is the last, the last little bit. You can see there are three there. The first one is actually called the Beetle Buster Baseboard and Trap. And it's for use with oil or diatomaceous earth. It recommends, a retail recommended price is $80 mounted. So that's mounted. And that is available online. The next one is the Blue Bees bottom board. That one is mounted. They sell unmounted for $18.95. That's just the plastic in Just the plastic, yeah, not the mounted. The whole, not the wooden bit. Not the whole frame like that would be 45 or 45 50. okay. They're in stock at Jeremy. Sorry? They're in stock. They're in stock. We use them and they're great. They're really good. Recommend them. And then this last one is a brand new item and it's um There it is. It's called a beetle jail beta ball. It's an in-hive, reusable, small hive beetle trap and recommended for retail is only $6.60 for a new keeper. Does anyone else have these? 
seen them? No? I think they're fairly well, new. Are they the same as the ones, uh, the metal one you've got on the table there? No. No, they're quite deep actually. Mm. I think they're about four inches deep. So they've got a little reservoir in the bottom. Um, but I wasn't able to get any from William because he sold out, so obviously they're, they're pretty popular. And that now is the end.